First and foremost, as I said, appreciate you for all for being here. Uh, this webinar is webinar one of, I've got four coming up over the next couple of weeks. A little bit of a, uh, a teaser in there. I'll talk more about that towards the end of it and as we go through. But for now, uh, this webinar is all about how to stop sabotaging a good relationship when you find it. So I'm going to just dive straight in. Let's do it. So as I said, welcome. Appreciate you all for being here. Appreciate you for being on time and making it all work. So firstly, who is this webinar for? It is for any man or woman who sabotages the good relationships you get into, either current relationships or past relationships, struggle to open your heart and let people in, have a past of being unfaithful when you're in a relationship, lose your voice, and are not able to convey your own needs when in a relationship can see how your relationship cycle is starting to impact your career life. Find yourself constantly in and out of relationships and can't be single. Most importantly, this webinar is for those of you who are ready to call in a connected and supportive relationship where you can be yourself. By the end of this webinar, as said, the topic being how to stop sabotaging a good relationship when you find it. You will have a deeper conscious understanding of why you're addicted to sabotaging good relationships. Why being scared of receiving breaks down your relationships. Why you end it when it's good. Why the fear of abandonment keeps you running from relationships and why you never feel safe in any relationship, even friendships, until you understand this one thing. Now, the other thing is that there is nothing for sale in this webinar. This is purely information. So firstly, who am I? Brett Williams, founder and head coach of Life With Options, women's online education, Conscious Brothers, men's online educa education, in the last two years, I've been mentoring men and women in emotional awareness, building true self-confidence, reprogramming limited, limiting mindset, relationship dynamics, harnessing masculine and feminine energy, self-empowerment, stepping into the, your true you. And I'm educated in neuro-linguistic programming, a practitioner certification, and also life's experiences. So, Let's first have a look at what is a good relationship. Most define a good relationship as a relationship where you are respected for who you are, valued for who you are, not judged for who you are, both expressive of your healthy feelings for each other, Connected on an emotional, mental, and spiritual level. A team, your partners in your life's journey, and there, uh, and there for each other. Free to be yourself, and where expressing yourself is encouraged. And so, why do you want a relationship like this? Seems like a pretty obvious question there, doesn't it? But let's explore some common reasons why people want a relationship like that is because you've had plenty of bad relationships. You finally realized what you deserve in a relationship. You grew up in a house where you witnessed the opposite and you vowed not to have a disrespectful relationship like your parents. Your past relationships have been controlling, manipulative, and you don't like who you became in those relationships. You have an ideal view of what a relationship should look like. And all of these are valid reasons. Perhaps you relate to one or more. As we're going through, let me know in the chat box. I'll come back to it later. Let me know if you've actually resonated with any of those on that list. And so, the controversial reason. Unconsciously holding onto this 
validates your unconscious story, keeping you stuck in a cycle of never having found the right one. And this gives you an escape. So who's having one of those experiences right now? <laughs> Maybe you're like, Brett, you've kind of got that, I'm not sure where you're going with this. I'm a little inquisitive, but at the same time, not really impressed or maybe I've triggered something within you, or you're just like, huh, what, where'd that come from? And so if you're sitting in one of these spaces, it's perfectly okay. We're gonna go through it in a moment. And at the same time, I know I have a few current and past clients who are on this webinar right now, they will know and understand where this is going. So it is perfectly going to wrap it up in the end. So stay with me here. If this is something that's come up for yourself, stay with me. All right. Let's go into the story of the salt shaker. Have you ever gone, ever gone racing into the cupboard? You know you're going there for the salt, right? Your mind's on the salt. That's what I want. Salt is all that is on your mind, and it is your sole focus. Yet, Hold up, I've got the videos just going over the screen. Yet how many times have you looked and looked and looked even more, rummaging around the items in your cupboard, looking for the salt, you've moved the pepper, the tomato sauce, the pasta packet, but damn it, where is the salt? Somebody must have moved it. Turning around with that confused look on your face, you ask the other person who is in the, in the house, who is there. Have you seen the salt? Their response, it should be in the cupboard. Nope, it's not there, you frustratingly reply. They proceed to walk over to the cupboard, look inside and then go, ah, it's there. Well, it wasn't there a moment ago, I swear. You're now baffled and frustrated. You grab the salt and continue on with what you were doing, realizing that the salt shaker you had pictured in your mind that you were looking for was a different color or shape to the one that was actually in your cupboard. And so the moral of the story is what you are looking for can be right in front of your eyes and we can still be blind to seeing it. Hmm, interesting. So then, what is really stopping you from this relationship? What is really stopping you from having that good relationship that you desire? So let's dive in. The focus of this webinar is why you're addicted to sabotaging good relationships, why being scared of receiving breaks down your relationships, why you end it when it's good, why the fear of abandonment keeps you running from relationships, why you never feel safe in any relationship, even friendships, until you understand this one thing. Are you ready? That's not the one thing, by the way, but are you ready to dive into it? Is more the question. Okay why you're addicted to sabotaging good relationships. Being in and out of relationships keeps the drama cycle of relationships playing out. Your story of there's no decent men, women out there, gives you a conversation topic in your social or workplace circles. Moving into or leaving a relationship gives you a distraction to avoid focusing on the underlying issues that you've not yet healed. You find yourself falling into a relationship because you're not able to convey your truth. Instead of speaking up, you find yourself in a relationship you never wanted to be in. Then you don't know how to get out of it so you play out your unconscious relationship sabotaging strategy. So in the end, they make the decision to end it, not you. 
you have preconceived unspoken expectations that you have on the relationship. When your partner doesn't meet these, you sabotage the relationship as he or she did not meet your preconceived unspoken expectations. Let me know if this is making sense. So why being scared of receiving breaks down your relationship? You're probably thinking, Brett, where are you going with this? Well, of course, I'm about to explain that. And so let's keep going. If you have an unhealthy relationship with being in the spotlight, i.e., if the attention is on me, then I've done something wrong. Compliments, maybe past conditioning or belief that compliments are someone's way of sugarcoating a negative degrading comment, i.e., you did well here, but this thing, you totally messed that up. What were you thinking? So when someone's, someone compliments you, you deflect it as fast as possible to unconsciously attempt to soften the blow of the unconsciously expected negative comment that you're unconsciously expecting. Whew. Hopefully you're still with me on that one. Emotions. So again, if you have an unhealthy relationship with your emotions, and this is men or women, that if someone is too emotional, so your partner, somebody around you is too emotional, man or woman, then you will put up a wall. This is if you have an unhealthy relationship with your own emotions. You will put up a wall. You're not able to be with your own emotions and you sure as heck can't be with somebody else's. Love. If the man or woman you're with doesn't convey love in the same way you saw it expressed growing up, healthy or unhealthy, then you won't receive it as being love. So on here, there's a whole array of things. Let me know in the comments if this is making sense, if there's anything that's showing up for yourself where maybe growing up in, an, in childhood environment, you were finding that every time that I was in the spotlight, it was because you were getting in trouble for something. And if this idea of the compliments where that conditioning of it's somebody sugarcoating something that they really want to tell you, or like, you know, it's not, they don't really mean it because they have an ulterior motive. And so when you're not able to actually be with receiving any of this, and this is just scratching the surface of a few things, there's definitely other areas as well. Maybe there's something that you can see in your own life that you have an unhealthy relationship with that's not on this list. If that's the case, throw it in the, the comments. I can see, the chat box, is, chat box is lighting up at the moment with a few comments. So I'm keen to see what they are. As said, I will come back to them. You know what? Let's open it now. What, what's everyone saying? All right. Shannon's saying, you're good. Oh my God, I grew up where my dad was unfaithful, etc." Tammy says, yes, makes sense. Uh, Shannon promises are huge for me. They are too for Tammy. I can see you both in the presentation. Oh, yep, that's that other comment. So appreciate it, Shannon. Stick with me. I've got some goodness still coming. So like, as I said here, you know what? I'm going to shift up a little bit. Let's have a bit of interaction in this moment. So is there anything else that's showing up on this screen that hasn't otherwise shown up for you or that I haven't listed on here? Like I said, being in the spotlight, compliments, emotions. Like I, there's definitely a lot of other things out there that if you have an unhealthy relationship with them, you know, the relationship with yourself. If you have an unhealthy relationship there, well, then that can play out with being able to receive. It kind of all interlinks in so many different areas. So, excited. All right, and I can see somebody else is just, well, somebody was on, so either way, hi, bye. But we, keep, we will keep going. All right, so again, <laughs> after that, after going through this one, who's having these experiences now? Like who's still looking at me going, huh, what? Maybe there's a bit of that, that anger, frustration, or the confusion. But from the sounds of the chat box, with what Shannon and Tammy are saying in there, it sounds like you're all on page with me as well. And all of this is making perfect sense, which is fantastic. And so why you end it when it's good and the fear of abandonment? 
Oof, this is good. Have you ever heard the expression, good things never last? Ooh, woohoo! <laughs> oh yeah. Let me know in the chat box if you ever heard of that one before. And so, when something is good, what is your, uh, is good, what is your nervous system then starting to prepare itself for? Hey, when something's good, Tammy's like, yes. <laughs> so when, is, when something is good, what is your nervous system then starting to prepare itself for? Like, let's be real. The other shoe to drop. Now, if you haven't heard of this terminology, it's the expression of the other shoe to drop is alludes to, it's like from the 1900s or something like that, being woken up by the neighbor, loudly dropping one shoe on the wooden floor. It's the anticipation of the noise of the second shoe. So it's like there's something already happened and Tammy's like, yeah, always waiting for something to go wrong. Yeah, let me know who else agrees with that. And so something's happened. Now in this situation, we're talking about the relationship is going really, really well. And where we're starting to go with it then, that anticipation of a good thing never lasts. And so there's that weight. It's like, you just know something's going to, to come about. Shannon is saying, yes, and it's not going to last. And, and, and where it's not going to go at last. Yep. Too good to be true. Yep. Perfect. All right. We're all on the right page. And so don't worry, I'm not going to leave you just in the lurch of, oh, yep. And good things never last. This is what your nervous system's doing. You know, show's over. Don't worry. I got you. And so it's a self-protection thing. Like this whole thing here of sabotaging or ending a relationship when it's good, coming from that space of good things never last, it's really a self-protection thing. It really is. And when in this experience of a relationship going great, your nervous system freaks out. All it knows is something bad is coming and this means pain. That's all your nervous system knows. Something's good and now it's going to mean pain at some point. And so your unconscious mind goes off the deep end. Reading into a slight delay in your partner, moving their focus from their phone to acknowledge you as you walk into the room, there must be another guy or a girl. It starts looking for things that may or may not be there. And I'm going to get into both sides of it in the moment. So relax, we're good. And that leads into ending or sabotaging a relationship when it's good. It's your way of controlling the outcome. You, because let's be real, as humans, as people, you like a predictable environment. And when you feel like the predictable outcome is out of your control, i.e., when is the other shoe going to drop? The unknown unsettles you. <laughs> Shannon, oh my God, yes, I left my husband and we are separated. Woo. Interested to hear more about that one. And so your unconscious mind finds justification and reason to support your decision, to, to support your decision to end the relationship, making you feel good about it and calming your nervous system. So the whole thing that you know here is that Something is good. It's amazing right now. And the sh first shoe's dropped. And that first shoe is that you're waiting for the second shoe. And all your unconscious knows is that I feel nervous. I feel scared. I feel off. I feel weird. I feel this energy within me that I don't understand and I can't quite put my fingers on. 
And all your emotional system knows is how to regulate that unconscious weird feeling. And so it's going to look for any reason or any justification to support the decision to, in this case, we're talking about ending the relationship. Now, in the moment, we're talking about ending a good relationship. All of those relationships that we were talking about before, all of the things that you want in a relationship, a relationship that's connected, that's supportive, that's all of these things. That's what we're talking about here. And so all you're looking to do in that moment is regulate your own environment to calm your nervous system, to make you feel good. And in these situations, as I said, it's a self-protection thing. It's being able to create a predictable outcome because when you end this relationship, then you're the one that knows the outcome. But you don't know what the other person's thinking or if they're going to end the relationship or what's going on there. And so um, Shannon says, if I don't have control, I freak out. Just you wait. I got something for you. It's, uh, it's coming up in a moment. And so when it comes to, you might be thinking, but wait, Brett, what if my su suspicions are valid? And what I'm talking about here is like the suspicions of that delay in them responding to you as you walk in the door or, you know, their attention or whatever it might be. Like, this is what I'm talking about here. So, but wait, Brett, what if my suspicions are valid? If your suspicions are valid, then your mind will always find what it is you are looking for. There are a few things to take into consideration. Have you been overlooking the red flags from the very start? And are you now only starting to see the red flag behavior? So maybe right now, as you're starting to, you know, things are really, really good, and it's been a bit of an up and down cyclic relationship, or maybe you've been a little bit blind to some of the, the early signs, early red flags, those moments where your intuition was like, you know what, this isn't right, this isn't gonna work, this isn't good, you shouldn't be in this. Maybe you're only now starting to see these because for whatever reasons going on in your own life, that has you be more present in the relationship. It's having you now to be able to actually see what's going on and, and start to challenge and question some of it. So if your suspicions are valid, well then, you know, have that real conversation with yourself. Have you been overlooking the red flags from the very start? Are you now only just starting to see the red flag behavior? Have you actually uh, raised your concerns with your partner and, ha and had a conversation about it? You know, about their behavior, about all of that. And how do you feel on the other side of that conversation? Like, does that feel supportive? Like, does that feel like, you know, it's still the right thing to be? Or is there still some red flags that are coming up that you're, you're overlooking? And as it says here, spoiler alert, next week's webinar topic is how to communicate your truth in any relationship. So as I said, this is the first webinar of four webinars over the next four weeks. The next webinar is how to communicate your truth in any relationship. I'm gonna get into more of that at the very, very end and how you can register. And yeah, stay with me. Let's keep going through this information. Because this is the other truth. If your suspicions are wrong, so we're talking about here, it is a good relationship. There's nothing to worry about. Your nervous system is overreacting because everything is good and that unconscious belief that good things don't last. So this is the other truth, that if your suspicions are wrong, but due to you having suspicions about your partner and your anticipation of the worst, you will emotionally start to withdraw from your partner and he or she will feel this. They will start feeling your shift in energy and in turn will gravitate to other places to find the attention you're no longer giving them. This doesn't have to be sexual. It can be spending time with work colleagues, friends, whether they're opposite sex or same sex. So your unconscious need to control the outcome and to attempt to protect yourself from the pain you feared will actually create the pain. Whew. 
does that resonate? Does that make sense in this whole process? And so maybe also at the same time, like, let's have a look at this from another perspective. Have you ever been on the receiving end of any of this? So somebody sus suspected you of something, they then started to cut off their love to you, their connection to you, and you have felt that shift in energy. And intentionally or unintentionally, you have found yourself spending maybe more time communicating with work colleagues that you didn't otherwise, or friends or somebody else. And in doing so, all you're looking for, all we're looking for is, as people, as humans in this experience is the fact that, you know, connection. And so if all of a sudden our partner or you take your connection away from your partner, well then they're going to look for connection. And as I said, it doesn't have to be cheating. It doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't have to be any of that, but it will be a shift in, uh, in behavior. Tammy says, yes, ex-husband, he didn't talk to me at all. Uh, Shannon says, I'm always stop it or defend myself before I get hurt. All right, cool, cool. All right. So <laughs> again, I'm loving these emojis. Who's having any of these experiences with me right now? From the sounds of it in the, in the chat box, we're all on the same page, we're all flowing very well. Uh, and as Tammy said, yeah, he didn't talk to me at all. So I started chatting to friends online and it's not a case of if we, if we strip it down to the bare basics of it, it's not malicious intent in that situation as, as Tammy's saying here, but it's just a search for connection. And it's a case of being mindful. Like, as I said here, if your suspicions are wrong, but due to having that suspicion about your partner and your anticipation of the worst, you will emotionally start to withdraw from your partner and he or she will feel this. And so by nature, we're looking for connection as people. That's what we're looking for. And so that connection may then be coming from other places. So it's something to be aware of. All right. And Shannon, this one is where I was talking about here. So it is a lack of trust within yourself that has you need to control the situation. How does that one resonate? Shannon's like, ouch, but don't worry. It doesn't end there. It's okay. It's all right. And build some foundations around this one. Because what it actually is, it's a lack of trust that you'll be okay no matter the situation. So it's not a, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. It's not a negative self damaging idea. Like that's not what it is. And I'm gonna get into this in a moment. But what it actually comes back to as a core, it's a lack of trust that you will be okay no matter the situation. And that's where that need for controlling the situation comes from. Because if the situation that you then walk into is not one that you wanted or doesn't look and feel the way that you, you created it. And in this situation, we're talking about sabotaging a good relationship. Well then you have this unconscious lack of trust that you will be okay. And that's what we're talking about here. And I'm going to give you some foundation and framework around this. I'm not going to leave you just sitting in this hole. And so why you never feel safe in any relationship. If you have placed your identity in the hands of everything around you, then you don't actually know who you truly are. And when you don't know who you are, you are constantly reactive to the world around you. Men, who are you? Women, who are you? When you define yourself by your job, your relationship status, your place within society, or whatever it might be, the moment that anything shifts within these environments, you are lost. You behave in ways that are not you. 
how do you know they are ways that are not you? Because you look back over time and think, who was that? Like, I don't even know that person. Like, who even said that? I know it came out of my mouth, but like, who was talking? You start acting in ways that are not aligned to who you are. Until you know this one thing. Drum roll. <laughs> who are you? Like, who are you? I'm just gonna let that sit there for a moment. That's right. We haven't finished here. But like, sit with that right now. As I said, men, who are you? Women, who are you? Have you been defining who you are based on the world around you? Because that's not who you are. So who are you? Because when you know, you will stop sabotaging good relationships. Your nervous system won't be scared of the future. You will be perfectly happy embracing the great times and perfectly happy in the not so great times. You won't have any fear of abandonment because no one can take away who you truly are. You are open and able to fully receive a compliment, no longer bracing for a negative comment. You will have more happiness in your life. Good things will come your way. And much more. This is what's there when you truly know who you are. Because you deserve all of this. You deserve the relationship that you, you want. You deserve that love. You deserve that respect. You deserve the appreciation, the acceptance, the support, the partnership. You deserve to be happy. The moral of this story, learn to know who you are independent of the world around you. Learn to trust yourself and not sabotage your own self. You're now aware of unconscious reasons you have been creating current situations. Use this information to stop making the same mistakes next time. If you walk away with anything out of this presentation, you are now more aware of things that have been going on for you in the past. Learn to trust yourself. Stop throwing yourself under the bus. And so what's next? Big things are coming. Yeah, I've got some programs launching in five weeks time. But now's not the time to talk about it. But first, the next webinar. The topic of the next webinar, as I gave you that little, a little sneak peek, that little insight, how to communicate your truth in any relationship. Now, this doesn't have to just be an intimate relationship. This can be a work relationship. It can be friendships. It can be family. It's how to commu communicate your truth. You know, maybe going back to some of these things, like one of the things that I was talking about with sabotaging a relationship or getting into a relationship that you actually didn't really want to get into, but you kind of like woke up one day and realized, oh, heck, I'm in a relationship with this person. And that's because you didn't have the ability, the, the awareness or the, the confidence or the trust or whatever it might be within yourself to be able to speak your truth. Now, there is also a system and a strategy to be able to, to communicate your truth. 
And the things that we're going to get into in this next webinar, which is going to be next week, say, uh, it might be similar time, same time. I'm going to have a look and see. I might gear it more towards US time. Either way, register for it because, and I'll give you the details in a minute, because you will get a recording either way. I might even run two times for the next four weeks. So we'll see. So the things I'm going to share with you on this next webinar, which is how to communicate your truth in any relationship, is why the fear of judgment is holding you back. So holding you back from being able to speak your truth. Why you don't know how to create a safe space for yourself to express your truth. So I was talking before as far as like, maybe you haven't been conveying your truth because there is a fear of, you know, how the other person's going to react or, you know, you just don't feel safe to express it, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to look into here is giving you some foundations and structures and some framework as to how to be able to create a safe space. So then you can actually express yourself. Now this is with anybody. Okay. And why you're reliving your past in your present and how you can move beyond it. So how this is all holding you back. So how to register for the next webinar. Uh, it'll be the same structure. The next webinar will be registered via the same link. For the men, it's, it's consciousbrothers.net webinar registration. For the women, it is lifewithoptions.net webinar registration. So once you jump off this webinar, I highly suggest that you go and register for that. What I will do is I will send out an email as well, but just go back to the same uh, links that you had. Uh, you would have also got an email with a shared link in there as well. So you can go back there and register for next week's webinar. Uh, I haven't changed the, the link in it at the moment. So the, the Zoom link, ignore that. I will send you the right one before the actual date. <clears throat> and so lastly, question to you. If you got any value out of this webinar, Share the links below with your friends who will get value out of the next webinar. So the one I was just talking about then about how to communicate your truth in any relationship. If there's any friends that you can now think of that you can see, Oh my God. Now they might be in a relationship. They might be single. It might be more focused around their work side of things because they're, they're moving into different areas in their career, whatever it might be. This webinar is for, is for them. So share the links below uh, via the exact same links, share these with them, send it across to them and say, Hey, you need to be on this next webinar. This guy's amazing. He knows his stuff and giving you some insights into how to be able to communicate your truth in any relationship, in any situation and start to be able to give you some framework and structures around that. And that's kind of also stepping into developing true self-confidence and things like that as well. So, Make sure you are on that webinar. And as I said here, uh, if you have any friends that register for the webinar next week, um, there's a chance that it may be, I may run two. I haven't worked that out just yet. But either way, there will be the recording for that webinar and I'll send it out to you. And so when they register for the re webinar next week, as I say here, I will send them a copy of this webinar as well.